Hi everyone, my name is Mason Snyder. I'm the sous chef at Catamount Lake House. With everyone stuck at home lately, we figured people were doing more cooking, so it, we thought we'd share with you some of the things that we like to cook at home. Um, easily the biggest request we got for the summer dinner menu was a pasta night. So I figured I'd start with homemade pasta, which happens to be one of my specialties and also one of my favorite things to cook. Pasta's so versatile. You can make spaghetti, linguine, tagnatelli, tortellini, ravioli, lasagna, and don't tell your Italian grandmother this, but honestly, you can add or stuff the pasta with whatever you want. Whether that be chicken, uh, lobster, crab, cheese, vegetables. It's all up to you, and you can add that to whatever type of sauce you enjoy having. But today, my finished product will be mushroom tortelloni. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's very similar to tortellini, but traditionally, tortellini is smaller and stuffed with ground or minced meat while tortelloni is larger and stuffed with ricotta and a leafy green, such as spinach. Pasta is so easy to make, it, it's really just two ingredients. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to make is the pasta dough. Um, normally you would make this with two ingredients, just flour and egg. Sometimes it includes salt. Um, with this one, I'm going to use three ingredients, um, but it's going to be all-purpose flour, semolina flour, and eggs. Um, so the reason I'm going to use two different types of flour has to do with how it's grown. Um, but the first one is all-purpose flour. It's your normal all-purpose flour that you can grab at any grocery store. Um, I do like there is a brand called Bluebird. It's from Cortez, Colorado. I like using local stuff if I can. Um, and the other one here is semolina flour. Um, normally if you were to make pasta you want this to also be what's known as double double ot like this is. This is a fine fine grind. It's a double ot. Um, this is a one. However, I'm still going to add it. Um, and the reason for it is because semolina is what's known as a durum wheat. Durum wheat is grown during the colder months and because it's a wheat that's grown in the colder months it has more protein. And that protein is what's going to develop with gluten. And um, gluten allows for your pasta to be stretchy and sticky and whenever you're working with it it's going to be more pliable. Some people have some issues with um, particularly stuffed pastas like we're going to do where they break apart once they hit the pasta water and that's usually the reason is because they're lacking in this elasticity that the semolina flour likes to add. The second part of this is eggs. These are just your normal eggs that you can grab at a grocery store but if you want to have better pasta then you can have better eggs. It's that simple. Um, so if you have somebody that's has chickens around your house and they're uh, feeding them really well, I would buy from them. One for making pasta dough. So we're going to take these eggs. I got six of them in here. Um, we're going to separate four yolks from that and then we're going to use two whole eggs as the final part. Um, to break these apart, the best thing to do is move the camera down here. Just have three bowls like this. Um, then you're going to take the egg, crack it on a smooth surface, just like that break the egg open and now the easiest way to separate these egg yolks like this is a lot of people like to go back and forth on these eggs but sometimes they crack weird and also you run the risk of breaking the yolk so the easiest thing to do is actually just get your hands dirty drop the egg right into your hands like that and kind of create a mesh and run it between them just like that and then you're gonna have a nice egg yolk and then put it right in that bowl and then I got egg whites in this one, egg yolks in this one. And then the last thing I'm going to do is put the shells in that guy right there. So I'm going to do that four times. Again, break it right into my hand. So the shell over there. Now if I drop it in, not a big deal. Because I don't care what's happening inside this bowl here. And then I'm just going to put the yolk right in there. Um, the other thing that I did was I made sure that these eggs are at room temperature. It seems to go better with the pasta. There's my fork. I'm just going to take these last two and break them and add them straight into there. Now I'm going to wash my hands. Notice, um, I didn't throw away my egg whites. I'm going to save those for later, just in case my pasta turns out to be a little bit dry. 
Um, this is the ones I'm going to use inside my pot, my uh, flowers together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create basically what looks like a volcano. So I'm going to make a little well right here in the center. Just like that. And I'm going to take my eggs that I've mixed up. And I'm going to pour them right into the center of the volcano. Hopefully they don't spill over the edge here. Then I'm going to grab a fork. Take those fork and I'm going to make sure the first thing I do is I'm going to poke these egg yolks. I'm going to make sure that they're broken up a little bit and they start to get in there. And then I'm going to take my fork and go right into the edge and slowly mix in the flour. And you have a little bit of spill, not a big deal, just work with it. Kind of keep working it back in there, kind of work the flour over, and then eventually it'll get back in mixed in there. And keep working it. This is not something that's probably going to stay clean um, if you're doing it by hand. You absolutely can do this in a uh, KitchenAid. It's, just use a dough hook on that and then pour all your ingredients in there and mix it together. Um, but when I'm doing this little bit of a pasta dough, I like to do it by hand because I kind of get a better feel for what the pasta dough should actually be when it's a finished product. Now I'm going to go ahead and get really messy here and just work it with my hands. And just keep working flour in there. Um, if you got the right ratio of yolk in there, so as you can see, I got I got it back into a kind of a dough ball going here, and uh, I can tell that it's a it's a little dry, um, which is pretty common here in Colorado. Um, we have dry weather, so that's why I keep dipping my hands into the egg whites and using that to kind of kind of moisten the pasta until it's the right texture. And I'll show you what that looks like here at the end. And you just keep working it, kind of kind of like you would a bread dough. As you can see, it's kind of got the right moisture content right now. I'm just kind of firming it up a little bit. Okay. And now the big test to find out whether your pasta dough is going to be able to be stretchy and elastic enough is you take your finger and you just kind of push it in there. As you can see, it kind of bounced back. Do it again right here. So see how the pasta dough kind of bounces back? That lets me know that it's got enough elasticity that as I run it through my pasta machine or um, the roller that it's going to hold up to, kind of let's keep smoothing this out, uh, it's got a decent color to it as you can see, um, maybe I think I would have probably preferred it be slightly more yellow, maybe a little bit, so um, maybe a little less egg white and a little bit more egg yolk, but again, as you can see, it's going to work out just fine. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is this pasta dough, I said looks um, like it's got the right moisture in it. Um, and that's because I know what I'm about to do. I'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap, and then I'm going to sit it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. This is an app. You absolutely have to run this step. Uh, it's the only thing that makes pasta dough kind of take a long time is that you have to wait 30 minutes once you've made your dough. Um, what it's going to allow you to do is the moisture that's in the eggs is going to start to seep into all the little pieces of flour that are in there. Um, so it's not going to be this try at the end. There we go, into the refrigerator for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to clean this mess up, I'm going to wash my hands, and then we'll start on the next steps. Alright, so the next thing we're going to make is our filling, and it's a ricotta based filling, so we're going to start with two cups of ricotta, this is just store bought ricotta, um, if you don't have it, it's really easy to make. Um, you take two quarts of milk, and two teaspoons of an acid, like uh, vinegar, or lemon juice, Bring the milk to almost a boil, and right before it boils, you add your acid into the milk, and it'll start to separate the curds from the whey. And then you run it through a strainer, and keep the curds off to the side, and let those dry until they become a ricotta. It usually takes about 45 minutes or so. Um, it gets drier as you leave it, so if you take it overnight, it's going to become an even drier ricotta. Um, next thing I got is spinach, and I'm going to wilt this later in um, in extra virgin olive oil. Normally I wouldn't use extra virgin olive oil for cooking um, because it has a really low smoke point. Um, but for this case I'm going to be basically sweating my spinach um, so I'm okay with using an extra virgin olive oil at this point. 
Um, normally, if you're doing cooking, use like a canola or a vegetable or even an olive oil that isn't extra virgin. You can use that. They all have higher smoke points. Um, I'm also going to add some fresh sage, oregano, and basil. As you can tell, I kind of got my own herb garden here, so they've all been pulled off of that. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is add mushrooms. Now, this isn't really a common ingredient in your filling, but because of the type of broth I'm going to use, I wanted to incorporate mushrooms into it. Plus, I really enjoy mushrooms. Again, whenever you're doing your own pasta, fill it with whatever you want. So what I'm doing here is I've added my olive oil and the reason I was using olive oil is because it adds flavor and then I'm also adding my herbs and I'm going until I can just barely start to smell the herbs. Which is right now. So then I'm going to add my mushrooms. Just as I can start to smell the mushrooms, I'm going to go a little bit longer on these guys. Probably about 30 seconds or so. Right there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add my spinach because it takes the least amount of time to cook. I'm going to add that right in there and go until about the spinach starts to wilt. Preferably I have one a little bit bigger pan, but this is actually the biggest pan I have here at the house. Okay, once I got everything like that, I'm going to cut my heat, and then I'm going to let this thing cool down over on my counter, and I'm going to run my knife through here and chop this up until it's a little bit smoother, so that way it, it's not as big of a, a leaf whenever you get into that filling, um, and then I'm going to mix this into the ricotta. Okay, so the last component that we need to make is the broth. And for this, we're going to have about eight mushrooms, six to eight, it really doesn't matter. Um, about two cups of broth. I made this broth earlier. Um, it's really simple to make. All you got to do is have what we call mirepoix, which is carrot, celery, and onion in a 1 1 2 ratio. And a couple herbs and spices, and that'll make up your broth. Um, you can also use chicken bones, which I did for this one to get some extra flavor. And I also threw some anise in there as well. Um, garlic, you're probably going to use about four to five cloves on this guy. Some herbs, and then salt to taste. And to do this, it's really simple. All you're going to do is take a pan, and you're going to mix all these ingredients 
and put them in the oven at about 300 degrees and just kind of leave it in there until you get this like dark brown brothy color which I'll show you later I got everything mixed in here with the exception of the mushrooms and one of the things I really like to do with the mushrooms it's not an absolute must is I like to do what's called fluting them um, and all you do to flute a mushroom is you cut it in half just like that and then you take little hash marks at a 45 degree angle one way then flip the mushroom around and then do 45 degree hash mark going the other way and you get this product that looks like this and what that allows it to do is the mushroom can impart more of its flavor into the broth and then also because I'm going to use this mushroom later when I plate because they're going to be delicious is I'm also going to have more of the broth and the herbs and the garlic all infused into my mushroom okay now that I got everything in there I'm going to make sure put a lid on this guy um, you can also use tinfoil um, and then I'm going to go right into the oven with it always try to make sure you keep your oven door closed as quickly as possible and the temperature I got this thing at 300 degrees and it's going to be in there for a couple of hours it's really hard to actually give you an actual time on this because um, what I'm really looking for is is color and smell and flavor so I'm probably going to leave it in there for an hour and a half and then I'll bring it out and I'll actually taste it and look at it and smell it and make sure it fits the needs that I need it to be alright coming down to the wire all we got to do is roll out our pasta Fill it, and then we get to finish it. Okay, once you get that smashed down, um, you're gonna run it through your pasta machine. Again, you don't have to use one of these. Um, you can use a wine bottle, rolling pins, anything like that, until you get it down to the level that you need it to be. Um, each one of these machines are different. You're gonna see me go through each of the stages here um, on this machine. The first time I kind of fold it in half and then keep going. You'll see me go through each of these numbers, and as I do, it's going to make the pasta thinner and thinner. Um, with these machines, though, it's important to note that each one is very different, um, and those numbers really don't mean anything unless you're using the exact same machine. So if you have a, a Marcata, which is a very popular brand, Atlas 150, then we're going to go down to five. But I'll show you how you can check to see if your pasta is going to be thin enough. And it's really important that you get your pasta to the right thickness because too thin and it's going to fall apart um, as you enter into the pasta water. Um, too thick and all you're going to be able to taste is just pasta dough and that really defeats the purpose of having a stuffed pasta like a tortellini. Because um, you have these really, really delicate flavors inside of it and you want to make sure that you're getting those with every single bite. It's really important to try and keep that pasta as smooth as possible going through this machine. Okay, so once you get it to the right thickness, which this might be a little bit on the thinner side, but we'll double check here in a minute. Actually, I think we're going to be good. Um, but the best way to check, and, and we don't do this in restaurants at all, um, especially with the virus going around, you do, this would not be recommended at all. But for your family, and you know everybody's healthy and you're good to go. The best way to check to find out if your pasta is thin enough is just to blow underneath the pasta. If it flops up like that, then you're right about where you need to be. Okay, okay to measure this pasta out, what I do is I just go ahead and cut straight or in across the top to make sure that I have the straight edge to work with. Just like you're working with uh, wood or something like that, you want to do the exact same kind of methodology. Um, I'm going to take my measuring thing here, measure three inches, and then I'm going to make little nicks across the pasta at three inches. Okay, and just go ahead and take your little egg wash and size. Okay. Fold it over on itself. Make yourself a triangle. Keep all you're filling into the center of that triangle as best as possible and that way you get the best seal all the way around the triangle and just take it 
and then fold it around your finger like a ring. There. And take the back end of it and fold that over on itself. I just want to make sure you get the seal as good as possible. And you just have your tortellini. Down to the last couple steps of our uh, dish here. Uh, we're getting ready to make some pasta water. One of the things we have to do, because we didn't add salt to the actual pasta dough, we have to use pasta water with ton, well, a lot of salt. And basically, the only way you're going to know is if you got enough salt in your water, so you're going to mix this in. Is to actually take a spoon and taste it. And that's the face you should make. I'm going to show you guys real quick. It's one of my favorite garnishes. Um, I love fried sage. It's probably my favorite. So I got a little bit of olive oil in here that I got nice and hot. I'm just going to take the sage and toss it in there with my tweezers. Give it about I don't know, 10 seconds or so, and then just flip it over and let it fry. And I'm just going to do the rest of these guys. They're going to a rolling boil. You just want to add in your tortellini, and then it's going to cool down quickly. So I always keep a lid around just to cover back up, and so it gets back up to a rolling boil as quickly as possible. It's only going to be in the hot water for about a minute to a minute and a half, and then we're going to finish this off in the sauce. After 90 seconds or so, you're going to take your tortelloni and add it right into that broth that you made earlier. And then you're going to do about another 90 seconds in here, constantly keeping it mixing. And this is where the flavor is going to start to really incorporate. Grab a towel, keep that thing. Always keep everything clean. And just keep mixing it. Okay, so now that you have everything made, the last thing to do is to finish it off by plating it. Um, I like to have a little bit more control over my plating. Um, but you can easily just let this free fall as well. Um, so I like to get the broth in the plate. And then I'll take my tweezers and grab about six tortellini per plate. And I like to put them in groups of three. And I'll take a couple of the mushrooms that were in there. Make sure you put those in there. Probably about Anywhere from, I don't know, four or five of them. I usually like to do things in odd numbers, so I'll probably do five. Kind of let them go wherever they want to go. And then I'm going to take a couple of those fried sages, put them right inside a couple of these guys. And then I also have some fresh herbs. So there's some oregano, some basil. And just kind of let them go wherever they want to go. And then I'll finish it off with a little bit of uh, fresh parmesan. Just kind of scatter that around. And then I'll take a napkin here and give it a wipe on each side. And there you have it. Voila. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, making mushroom tortelloni with me. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you this summer for pasta night. If you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the next video, uh, don't hesitate to give us a call or email us. Thank you.